our Lent reading number 23 for the 11th of March. It's called Fridge Freezer. Ample goods laid up for many years. Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you've prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Given that the first refrigerators were invented in the 1870s, most of human history has lived without a technology that we take so much for granted today. Prior to the invention of the fridge, Options for chilling food were limited. Cold streams, caves or cellars had some effect, and in the winter ice could be cut. Combined with salt, some sophisticated and long-lasting storage could be achieved. The nearest thing to a fridge was the metal-lined wooden ice box of the late 18th century. Now that everyone has a fridge, these seem to us ineffective and inconvenient. The refrigeration revolution came in 1876 when the German engineer Karl von Linde perfected a process by which liquids could be converted into gas to keep a confined space cool. Others followed and by 1920 many companies had developed the technology to produce refrigerators some also with freezers. Inevitably, they were expensive luxuries. As the technology developed, it became clear that refrigerators not only produced heat, but also released chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which somewhat ironically created a hole in the ozone layer, thereby helping to melt ice caps and increase global temperatures. Modern fridges have eradicated this environmentally damaging byproduct. It's easy to forget that fridges have also eliminated famine in many parts of the world. Now that food can be frozen, it lasts longer. The med medieval concept of the hungry gap, the period between the food stores running out and the new crops coming in, hardly exists nowadays except in countries whose plights we still lament on our news bulletins. Without adequate storage, food went off quickly, and it was a challenge to survive the winter. Today we live in a world with not only abundant food, but also the technology and infrastructure to store, transport and provide fresh, frozen or dried food worldwide. After all, we live on a planet in which frozen lamb from New Zealand can be delivered into the freezers of British supermarkets without it ever rising above zero degrees centigrade. Food preservation, and therefore every fridge in our homes, is a matter of justice. Like the rich man in the parable, we have an abundance, and the question we ask is how to store it. In recent years, milk lakes and butter mountains have brought home the inevitable waste of overproduction. Market forces and pricing have created a financial climate in which it is better to waste vast amounts than to allow it to flood the market, lowering prices. Overall, there is plenty of food in the world. The problem is that some of it is in the wrong place and not everyone is determined to see it preserved 
and transported to where it's needed, preferring to destroy it instead. The man in Jesus' parable does not think to share his bounty, but wants to increase his ability to store it. As well as having literal application, Jesus' story is also metaphorical. Today, more so than ever, the accrual of wealth in cash, stocks and shares and investments is a pastime for some and a pipe dream for so many others. The distribution of money, wealth, resources and foodstuffs within communities and among nations is far from even. Yet the poor man and the rich woman, the starving girl and the spoilt boy are all made in the image of God, loved by God, redeemed by Christ and equally called to be generous stewards of creation. Politics religion and climate aside, there is no inherent reason why anyone ought to be better off than anyone else. There's no logical reason why anyone should be paid more than anyone else, yet the fabric of Western societies is woven with uneven threads. However wedded to the status quo of inequality we might be, and whether we like it or not, one day our life will be demanded of us, then the things we've prepared, whose will they be? One of the ways that some people foolishly believe they can cheat death is to be cryogenically frozen. A tragic case that went through the UK courts in 2017 involved a teenage girl who wanted to be frozen at death to be thawed and revivified later. After a legal battle with her father, she and her mother won the right for this to happen. But during the poor girl's remaining days, her mother spent all her energy fighting the case and then making preparations for her daughter's frozen body to be transported to the United States rather than spending the precious final hours with her, whose death from cancer was inevitable. The girl died alone, comforted only by the hope that one day she would be defrosted. The fridge freezer in our kitchen is a kind of TARDIS, freezing time for a little while so that our milk, eggs and meat will last a little longer. It's also a memento mori, a kind of coffin, delaying but not preventing decay. Everything in it has a use-by date. The psalmist asked God, Lord, let me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. Psalm 39 verse 4. Nothing lasts forever. Even if our food or our own lives can be prolonged a little thanks to science and technology. The fridge, therefore, is a testament to the gifts of human understanding and scientific achievement. But it's also a huge white reminder of the fact that one day we will die. Yet white is the colour of resurrection light, and it's towards that light we look, the light that reveals eternity, and the God who in Christ not only demands our life, but also gives us both earthly and resurrection life on which to build our hope. Let's pray. Father God, giver of life, preserve us from selfishness, self-centeredness and the desire to live forever. Help us live as those whose compassion and generosity spring from the assurance of resurrection hope. Amen.